it's just made me wonder what on earth is happening with Kate Middleton. <laughs> if they were willing to share this much detail about Prince right. Charles and it's that bad, what, what on earth is happening with her? King Charles III is being treated for some form of cancer. Not something I want to talk about long for long because there's not that much fun in cancer. But when he was treated a few weeks ago for a prostate issue, I was very impressed because he didn't need to make it public and doing so I thought would have motivated people and consoled people and perhaps sort of saved lives and and now he's doing the same and I think I think it's so absolutely admirable and it's hard to imagine a, a, a monarch in the past doing this and indeed some have not and yet Glenn is there a mm. part of you that thinks at times like this that you're just really sort of struck by the oddity of there even being a figure like this with such importance to our national lives who's not who's not a politician who's a sort of a public figure unlike any other that sort of really exists in the world and yet it's mm. so important to us his health and well-being yeah it is I mean like he's He's different to obviously your average civilian. I, I think, you know, the man who has a hospital named after him is going to be treated possibly better than we would be. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it is admirable that, as you said, he absolutely didn't need to come out with this and say this. And you sort of think that, especially with like the prostate sort of issue a couple of weeks back, that that's the sort of thing he'd sort of want to keep yeah. under wraps. It mm -hmm. feels very different to, I mean, uh, and usually you sort of feel that like it should be in these people's hands to say whether or not they want to. I remember years ago when, Michael Owen was at Manchester United and in the sports pages it said he was on the sidelines with diarrhea and I thought I bet Michael <laughs> Owen was like not can we not say that please <laughs> this is vastly different I think it's really impressive that he's actually come out and sort of you know sort of done a bit he'll he'll be fine because obviously he's getting excellent treatment mm -hmm. he'll outlive Megan he'll be yeah he'll be absolutely fine <laughs> yes no well uh, here's hoping Hadley I mean obviously the coverage of this has flown straight into the the, the royal the royal soap opera with sort of Prince Harry flying back yep. and so on do you think it's a bit of a test for media and I suppose the public as well but like whether at times like this look sick parent parent with cancer traumatic mm. Giles Corrin's written a beautiful column in the yes. paper today about when he yes. found out his father had cancer it's a test for media and the public to remember these are people we are talking about this is a family we're talking about or conversely <laughs> is it the fact that because these people this is power we're talking about it is legitimate to discuss them in a different way I think the truth is the only point of the royal family these days is to provide us with a living national soap opera right. and therefore that is how they're covered they have these incredibly privileged lives you know Prince Harry is ostensibly out of the royal family but he can still take a private jet over mm -hmm. here for a half hour chat with his dad this is the price they they kind of pay for this yeah. is that they're treated like characters on TV. They are the crown. And I've just treated everyday newspapers this week as being the latest episode of the crown. Right. Yeah, what's yeah. what's happening this what's happening today? Do you I mean do you have that do you share our sort of admiration for the fact that it's public or do you think it would just sort of have to be? I mean to be honest because I'm someone who spends too much time online it's just made me wonder what on earth is happening with Kate Middleton. <laughs> if they were willing to share this much detail about Prince right. Charles and it's that bad what, what on earth is happening with her but that is me watching too many episodes of The Crown. Yes, indeed. Yeah, maybe she just doesn't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> anyway, look, uh, look. We of course wish him well. Let's let, let's talk about some politics. In fact, let's talk about some secret politics. I want to talk about the secret Conservatives because <laughs> this week saw the launch of the Liz Truss Tory Splinter Group, the optimistically named Popular Conservatives. Uh, the launch <laughs> lasted uh, quite a long time, almost a full day, which is albeit not as long as most salad items, even cress, <laughs> but was still a while. Look, look, there was a lot to enjoy that happened. Uh, uh, at this event, from the, the the millionaire former banker Jacob Rees-Mogg declaring war on Davos Man, <laughs> and Lee Anderson deciding coal must be sustainable because it comes from trees, which I'm still puzzling over. <laughs> but the point and the main message came from Truss herself when she declared that the polls say the country is full of conservatives, <laughs> but they just don't want to admit it because they want to be popular at dinner parties. <laughs> Glenn, Liz Truss yeah. said she never gets invited to dinner parties. Do you think that's just because of concern about how she might behave in the cheese course, or could there be some other reason? I think it's not Liz Truss specific, but this, with the secret Tories, I feel like there is, there is, I think she is right. And I see secret Tories as a, a, a lot like sort of um, Mrs. Brown's boys in that like, and I, I don't I, I don't know anyone who's a fan but statistically I know that some of my friends are like secretly yep. they, they have to be mm -hmm. um, and so I think it is something that people keep quiet and um, it, I think that happens all, all across the world because that you know there's 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 sort of more socially dinner party acceptable uh, political viewpoints to take that are just easy anything for a quiet life yeah. sort of viewpoints to have and uh, a lot of those don't really sort of match up with 
a lot of what the Conservatives are like at the moment. And obviously the Conservatives aren't really going through, a, despite being in power, aren't going through their most popular period. So it would be a, a, it'd be a weird thing for someone to bring up at a dinner party unless they wanted to end the dinner party prematurely. I mean, the fact that they're also lying to the people who conduct opinion polls in that case, you know, yes. maybe it's particularly charming people. They want to impress them. They want to be hip in front of the pollsters. I'm not quite, I'm not mm. quite sure. Hadley, do you know any secret Conservatives? Are you a secret Conservative? <laughs> I mean, the real thing is, is of course they're conservatives. And this idea that dinner parties are something just lefties have is very odd. I have been to dinner parties, which are mainly Tory. And mm. if I said a left-leaning opinion there, I would be the one ostracised. Well, sure, yeah. So that's the weird mm. thing. Does Liz Truss just want to go to dinner parties with Guardian people in Islington? <laughs> is that actually what this is about? If she went to a dinner party at Jacob rees Mogg's house, she'd fit right in. So yeah. what is this idea that dinner parties are all lefties? That's just not true. It's I think potentially that Liz Truss is trying to now, you know, paint herself as potentially left wing and saying to her left wing friends, come on, I was prime minister for like literally five minutes. I was a Tory prime minister for like five minutes. You can't blame me for that forever. Uh, Glenn, is coal hmm. sustainable? No. Are, are, you, are you sure? Is this, are you, is, are you, would you raise this at a dinner party with me? Is this, is, this, is this your dinner party chat? I just wonder, because Lee Anderson seemed pretty sure. You know, he said that, look, people say coal isn't sustainable, but trees mm. are sustainable, but trees become coal, thus... QED. He didn't say QED. This is Lee Anderson we're talking about. Nonetheless, he seemed pretty sure if we can plant more trees, and in a mere several hundred million years, billion years, they will million years, they'll turn into coal. Uh, what is sustainable, right? It's fine, isn't this fine? The thing is, I, I I hate this sort of situation because I know just how completely wrong he is, but I don't know why he's wrong, and I can't. <laughs> I don't have the scientific evidence to back it up. In the same way that if someone told me that my to my face your name isn't Glenn, it's Daniel, I'd go, well, it, it, no. But then I, I don't know what evidence I can provide. Yeah. From, well, I well I know it isn't. Well, it sounds like you sounds like you've been outwitted by Lee Anderson. This is, this is a, this <laughs> yeah, a, which is the most humiliating. <laughs> this is a difficult day. Uh, Hadley, the whole point of the popular conservatives, mm. um, I'm struggling with because the idea is they are loyal to Rishi Sunak, but also <laughs> they're not. But also they're not. Um, I think I can clear this up for you, actually. Please. You know, the whole point of the popular conservatives is to do what the nation's been asking for for the past 20 years, which is bring Holly Valance back on the public stage. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> and yeah. thank God they have achieved that. I'm so yeah. glad that we now have Holly Valance as the political sort of kingmaker in this country. You know, America's got Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Britain's got Holly Valance. That's all that needs to be said about the two countries. She, she wants uh, she wants Jacob Rees-Mogg to be prime minister. I, I was, I was, I was fantasising yesterday that maybe this was reciprocal and he was a big fan of her 2002 single Naughty Girl. Uh, but, indeed, but who knows? Indeed, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I, she, she was not expected there. I, I felt Holly Valance. Yeah. No, and nor was she expected to be so verbose on her political <laughs> opinions. And yet, the nation has been doubly blessed. <laughs> Glenn, uh, is is Holly Valance the answer to our politics, or is this the the kiss kiss of death for Jacob, Jacob <laughs> Rees-Mogg? Well, I mean, she's is she from not the UK? Is it the, the, I, I mean, I, I mean, in terms of her being from Australia, which mm. is, I'd say, significantly more right leaning than the UK but she's got the credentials you know she was in an Australian soap she's in the first five minutes of Liam Neeson's Taken she knows what she's doing <laughs> <laughs> that's all yeah, that, that is indeed all we need